This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So, I'm very sorry I could not prepare more videos on JMeter, but now onwards I'll start preparing some good videos on JMeter as well. And uh, yeah, I'm really getting really good response for JMeter series. So, so far quickly I'll show you whatever we have covered that we have uh, installation part, common important terms in performance testing, how to record, HTTP and HTTPS in JMeter. Then we have seen Bla uh, Blaze Meter script recorder also, different components of JMeter. And then we have created uh, simple HTTP requests like get, post, put, and delete. We have seen uh, random number, variables, functions in JMeter. And JMeter logic controller was uh, one of the most important topic that we covered last time. And I told you that, okay, hey guys, that you have to uh, cover, we have to cover one more important concept that is called if controller which is very, very important for interview point of view as well as when you design uh, tomorrow some advanced script. Okay, that time also you can simply do that. So if controller, so what I'm gonna do that, okay, you right click on your thread group, go to add, go to logic controller, and there is a if controller is available. You click on this particular if controller, whatever the name you want to give, you can give, you can give any comment also, what is the purpose of this? And here you have to write a JavaScript uh, default JavaScript or any expression you have to do that in fact you can write your uh, JEXL3 interpreter also you can write it it means JEXL3 or Groovy uh, interpreter code also you can write it which can be written in Groovy and JEXL3 also or you can use simple uh, uh, your JavaScript as well and then we will see one more option that is what do you mean by JMeter thread dot last sample also can be used over here it's simple written over here now what do you mean by if controller if controller says that okay if any sampler is available or any request is available in this particular if controller let's say i'll just move this particular get request to if controller i'll just move it over here it means this particular get request is having you simple run it and then it will run but the condition is if it means whatever you are writing this condition should be satisfied so what do you mean by this condition this condition means you have to pass a javascript code over here Okay, so how to do that? So just a second, let me just close all these things. Okay, now how to do this? For doing this, what you have to do that, uh, let's see, I'll go to my uh, new window and, uh, okay, let it be like this. So I'll show you what kind of JavaScript that you can verify. So you just open your Google Chrome and uh, let's see, I'll open this particular Google Chrome and you do one thing that you right click on it and go to inspect and here on the console you can execute some javascript so you simply write one equal to equal to one yeah it's true so this is a javascript right so if i write that uh, okay so let's use this particular simple basic code over here so one equal to equal to one what does it mean it means this condition is satisfied you don't need to write any if else condition over here so by default it will take it okay yeah this expression the according to javascript is true if this particular expression is true then only it will execute get method okay then only it will execute this http request call now i'll go to my tree and then i'll run it you see that okay that uh, one equal to equal to if you come over here uh, one equal to equal to one is not working like that you do one thing you simple unselect this particular checkbox from here now you try it again you come over here go to tree and then run it again now you see that okay this http request is working fine although it got failed whatever the reason behind that but now it is working fine over there okay now if you remove this controller if you remove this guy okay i don't have any expression over here and then you run it again you go to tree and then run it again you see that okay it's not working at all okay and uh, yeah so it's saying that okay uh, we don't have any uh, if condition over here so it won't work like that right now if i write once again one equal to equal to one and then you go to your result tree and then run it again see it's working now it's uh what is the response we are getting okay server name api it's fine illegal character somewhere so i think uh, let me check the user defined variables We'll put it over here okay 
So let's run it again. Yeah, now it's perfectly fine because by mistake I have given my user defined variable under this particular sampler. So here I have given the server name equal to request res dot in and now it's working fine. Okay, now let me remove this uh, these two unnecessary these two variables. So this is a user defined variable that we have already covered in the previous session how to add the user defined variable and the same user defined variable I'm using over here. Right now, but condition I have written what condition I have written one equal to equal to one. It means working fine. Now you select this interpret condition as a variable expression. It means consider as a variable expression. So let's see it is working with the variable expression or not. Again, you go to tree and run it. Now see it is not working because this is simple. It's simple condition not in the form of variable I have written. I have written in the form of values. So that's why you have to unselect this guy and then you run it again. Now you will see the result tree that yeah, it's working fine. Right. So this is a simple basic thing about the if controller. Okay. Now, what else you can do that? Let's see if I write one equal to equal to two. This condition is false. One is not equal to two. And then you go to tree and then run it again. See, it's not working. We are not getting any result because this condition is not satisfied. Okay. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do that, okay, I'll go to my user defined variables and then I'm going to create one. Uh, let's see, I'm going to create one variable over here, result variable and the result variable is, let's see, uh, completed. This is a result variable that I have created, completed variable, right? Now I want that, okay, if result is equal to equal to completed, then only you execute this guy, otherwise you ignore it. So how do you write this? I simply come over here and then I'll take that particular variable. So my variable is what? A dollar. I'll write a result in caps. Okay. Equal to equal to what? Is equal to completed. What do you think? Will this work or not? So result equal to equal to completed. The value of result is that we have already defined over here is completed. And uh, the value of comparing with completed. So let's see. It's working or not. So I'll just uh, run it and in the tree you see it's not working. Why? Because my condition is not satisfied. My condition is not satisfied. Why? Now see it carefully. First of all, this completed is a string. So we have to write in double quotes. So write in the form of double quotes. Okay, will this work? Let's see. I'll again come to tree and run it again. This is again not working. Why? Because you are comparing with non string value to a string value right so what we have to do whenever we are getting the result tab i mean sorry whenever we are getting the result uh, value from this from here this completed it's a value it's a user defined variable and the value is written so when you are using it what you have to do guys you have to write within double quotes this entire value you have to write in double quotes like this okay guys i cannot zoom in Please try to understand okay like that now you clear the console and uh, run it again you go to tree and now it's working fine we are getting a response and this is a sample result a request we are sending perfectly working fine right so condition that i have written this is result equal to equal to complete it okay so this is absolutely working fine so you have to write in okay in this particular syntax way now, if you select this particular guy, condition as variable expression. So now let's see, so run it again and uh, go to uh, result tree. Again, it's working fine because we are using a variable this time. So you can select this particular checkbox that interpret condition as a variable expression over here like that. Okay, so this is the second use of this. Now let's see one more use. One more use is that um, you go to if controller. And inside this particular if controller, let's see. Um, or let's see, I'll go to my user defined variable and I'll create one more variable over here. Let's see. And my variable name is uh, uh, status or not a status. Let's see. I will define some uh, flag variable. Let's see, flag. Flag is equal to what? Flag is equal to true. I'll write it like this. Okay. So if I'm writing flag equal to true, so I can directly come over here and I can check that, okay, hey, uh, the value is flag. First of all, I have to remove all these things. And then you uh, try with the <coughs> private dollar. 
variable name is uh, flag is what equal to equal to true so both are boolean so you don't need to write any double quotes over there right i go to tree clear the console and then run it but it's still h not working so i'll go to if controller and i'll check that okay yeah dollar flag that i have written is equal to equal to true uncheck this guy and let's see it is working or not so i'll go to tree now it's working fine okay so this is not a variable expression although i'm using this particular variable but it will not interpret like a variable expression so you don't need to select this particular checkbox so sometimes what happens that okay uh, for performance advice you have to select this when you have multiple threads are working together in that case you can do that but by default you can uncheck this so this is absolutely working fine now the next thing that i'm going to use that okay let's see this user defined variable flag equal to true is written so if you don't need to compare you simply write this also a dollar flag a dollar flag means if the value of flag by default what is the default value of flag the default value i've already defined true over here it means my condition this controller condition is fine it means execute this particular get request so let's see if it is working fine or not so i'll go to a tree and then it's running fine you clear the console once again and run it again see once again it is absolutely working fine so this is also you can write it it's not like that okay you have to write flag equal to equal to true or you can write flag equal to equal to true also that is also good you can do that okay now you have seen this message over here that uh, uh, you know this jexl3 a groovy if you really want to use a groovy script over here that also you can do it guys so how to use a groovy script you simply write let's see a dollar and let's say i want to compare with the result tag uh, result variable once again this is a result variable copy this guy come over here and i'll simply write a result right but before that what you have to do you just remove this and you simply write dollar and uh, put a bracket over here like this curly brackets and write underscore underscore groovy you have to give that okay hey please execute this particular expression with groovy compiler and then you write bracket over here like this you have to write the parenthesis over here and then you have to write dollar and which variable my variable name is the result variable which is a normal string variable so you have to write in double quotes like this right and then it should be equal to equal to what it should be equal to equal to completed that you have written completed okay so we are saying that okay hey with the groovy scripting then you match not with the default javascript with groovy you match let's say tomorrow you have some groovy script right in that case you simple copy paste but you really want to execute that particular script with the groovy compiler in that case you have to use with groovy right and uh, let's see i select this guy and uh, let's run it so first i'll clear the tree and run it see it's absolutely working fine because my groovy condition is getting satisfied over here like this if you really want to use javascript you simply write result equal to equal to complete it that i have already shown you if you really want to use with groovy you can use with groovy also then we have one more compiler that is called jexl3 can you see that this jexl3 so you remove this guy from here underscore underscore you simply write instead of groovy you simply write jexl3 okay make sure no spelling mistake and then you go to tree clear the console and run it again see this is also working fine with jexl okay jexl3 interpreter also it's working fine instead of javascript so you can use jexl3 and the groovy instead of uh, javascript guys you can do that if you have okay any expression with jexl3 and groovy scripting right now we have one more concept that is called jmeter thread dot last sample okay now what do you mean by this to check the transaction request so how to do that let me uh, remove this guy now what you have to do let's see i'll just put one okay all these other request also i'll just move it over here so i have get delete put and post let's see get is working fine but suddenly delete is not working fine so if delete is not working fine i wanted okay put and post also should not work so let's say there is a sequential transaction you are doing right 
but your get is working fine perfect delete also working fine perfect put and post also working fine without any issue but suddenly what happens i'll create a dependency that okay my last request is status i'll check okay my last sample status is equal to okay then only you execute the put request or post request like that if the delete is okay okay then only you execute otherwise you don't execute right so so let's do one thing i'll deliberately for this particular delete i'll deliberately make this particular test fail so deliberately let's see instead of server name i'm giving some 111 over here like that okay and uh, i'll go to this if control the condition and here exact same thing whatever is written over here you write it i cannot copy so i'll just write it for you guys let's see j meter okay thread dot last underscore sample underscore okay so make sure guys no spelling mistake j meter thread dot last sample underscore okay and that's it okay and simply you select this value it for all children it means value it for all the children for all the children samplers over here right it means if the last sampler is okay last sampler means let's see this is the last sampler for delete when it comes over here for delete it check it okay hey what is the result for get the result of get is okay 200 okay it means then only you execute delete otherwise ignore it otherwise you make it fail okay and don't execute other okay samplers over there so let's see this is working or not so i'll go to my uh, result tree uh, remove this guy and run it so we'll see that okay get was working fine delete got failed and the moment delete got failed put and post is not working right so this is simple condition that you can put it over there it's a very 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 useful trick when you are executing a transaction where multiple uh, multiple requests are there and one request is dependent on the previous request then only you want to proceed further otherwise you just terminate the request like that you can do that so let's say i'll go back to delete and then remove this one 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 and uh, save it clear the console tree and then run it see now it's perfectly working fine because a delete also working fine put and post also working fine right like this so in that case now delete is absolutely working fine because i have removed the wrong server name okay so like this also you can simply do that guys okay so this is simple about if controller now in the next video i'll be covering more uh, user okay i would say use case wise uh, scenarios so till here what we have covered we have covered the different components the major components of jmeter okay and uh, there are some more controllers let's see while controller is also available so that is more advanced topic that i'll cover in the next or maybe in the upcoming chapters but before that now we will pick some really good scenarios for jmeter point of view okay for performance point of view so thank you so much guys for watching this particular video if you really like this video please subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions please feel free to write in the comment section definitely i'll try to answer over there thank you so much